A while back, I posted a video giving you an explanation of what Azure Advanced Threat Protection is. Well, here I want to show you a follow-up here to Azure ATP, but I want to do a little bit more of an in-depth overview and show you some of the new capabilities. So let's jump into it. I think we could all agree that digital transformation is an ongoing process, and nearly all enterprise businesses have shifting resources and services and users up into the cloud, and that makes sense. But those environments still include on-premises assets, such as Windows Server Active Directory. And using this hybrid environment model enables mobility, and it also creates potential risk and opportunities for adversaries as they provide many potential opportunities for exploitation. And so protecting large and complex environments can be both difficult and it can be costly. And so it's easy to miss risky configurations, which can often lead to critical vulnerabilities. And threats can originate from anywhere. And adversaries can find many potential weaknesses in large and complicated environments. So security operations teams, they can't chase down every potential threat. They really do need help to prioritize the, the massive amount of activity. And so additionally, if those SecOp teams don't have the best products in place to deal with those security risks, both time and resources can be easily wasted and most can't afford that kind of inefficiency, especially in times that are challenging for nearly all organizations. So here's an example of a real attack which helps to show how attackers can exploit vulnerabilities and move throughout an organization's environment, both on-premises and in the cloud, and while most SecOps teams review the data from on-premises and cloud environments separately, which makes it very difficult to correlate information between these environments and see the full scope of an attack. So let's look at how an attack in this type of environment might occur. In this case, they gained access to an administrative user where the account wasn't protected with multi-factor authentication. Using this compromised account, they had the ability to search through email and SharePoint documents where they were also able to exfiltrate data by creating automated rules, and so on and so forth. This gives them access to the cloud environment, but they also found a way to pivot into the on-premises environment. The attacker found VPN credentials as part of the email search and used these to log on to the on-premises environment. Once there, they were able to gain access to the on-premises environment. Now then they can move laterally throughout the environment to compromise additional assets. As they move laterally, they can also find and compromise other users and identities and seek out users with greater privileges, eventually seeking out users maybe with admin rights and finally you know, domain dominance and taking over the entire organization. Now, unfortunately, the path doesn't take the attackers that long to traverse. And security operations teams, they need to be able to understand that full scope of these attacks, again, from on-premises to the cloud and where Microsoft Azure Advanced Threat Protection can help. Now, it only takes one user to potentially compromise an entire organization, that patient zero. And because attackers can potentially gain access to the entire organization and have domain dominance through compromising a single user, identity has really become the new security perimeter. And for that hybrid enterprise, securing user identity across an organization could be daunting uh, and be a challenge for most security professionals and out there in the industry. Now to understand where Azure ATP fits into the broader Microsoft Threat Protection suite, it helps to look at a typical attack sequence. And here we have the kill chain. Now in most attack campaigns, those attackers get their initial foothold, foothold by phishing the user. So let's say an employee will received a malicious email and clicked on the attachment. The first line of defense here would be Office 365 ATP and leveraging URL and attachment detonation on an incoming email. And that's using things like safe attachments and safe links, and even Exchange Online Protection to an extent. Now, if Office 365 ATP and Exchange Online Protection is not in use by that organization, or if this threat came in through a different path, for example, your personal email, then the attachment will try to run a piece of malware on the device where it was opened. Now, the exploitation installation in the command and control phases here of the kill chain typically occur on endpoints where Microsoft Defender ATP can detect attacks. Now, this is not the only way to attack an organization, obviously, but this does represent one of the common attack vectors. It only takes one account to be compromised for the attacker to establish an entry point, and attacks like password spray attacks are actually really efficient. 
So say there's an, ex an account with multi-factor authentication enabled and has a password that is easily guessed or susceptible to brute force attacks. Once that account is compromised, attackers leverage that user's identity to look for opportunities to discover and enumerate groups with those privileged or those VIP users. Now, again, that account would not have multi-factor authentication on it. And so attackers will then attempt to compromise those discovered VIPs. Maybe it's a C-suite level user, or even it's a domain or enterprise admin, and then use that to access and exfiltrate uh, corporate data. And so these attacks can occur across all the domains, applications, devices, identity, data, and the Microsoft Threat Protection Suite of products allows you to see these attacks across all of these domains. Azure ATP has a unique role, however, to play in the attack kill chain by helping to protect identities. You can see that in that gray circle there. And specifically, Azure ATP analyzes Active Directory, Windows Server Active Directory from the network, security events and tracing data in those on-premises environments to help protect those environments from those would-be attackers. Together, Azure Active Directory Identity Protection and Microsoft Cloud App Security with Azure ATP helps to protect identities both on-premises and in the cloud. Now here we introduce the concept of Azure ATP being part of the overall threat protection narrative and one part of the suite of products that help to protect the enterprise environment, both on-premises and across the cloud. And Azure ATP protects the on-premises identity. Um, it's actually a sensor that gets installed on a Windows Server Active Directory domain controller. And to make sure an organization is, is secure from end to end, it's critical to both have the best security products and to have security products that work together seamlessly and are integrated out of the box. And that's where Azure ATP seamlessly integrates with Microsoft Cloud App Security and Azure AD Identity Protection. Now, Identity Protection detects uh, risky sign-in events from Azure AD while Cloud App Security looks for anomalies across a user's session looking at not just Microsoft products, but also third-party cloud apps like Salesforce and Box and G Suite and even AWS, to name a few. Now, as part of the strategy there, Microsoft is also bringing together these sources of identity data to provide a complete unified picture across on-premises and cloud. Now, this can be further extended and with the other elements of Microsoft threat protection, again, it can provide across the enterprise level of security. And this really helps us to simplify the security, reduce those costs, and really just make the, the uh, environment more secure and, uh, and uh, you know, raise my posture and lower my risk. Now, I wanna introduce the concept of Azure ATP differentiation and value. So we wanna introduce the notion here that um, Azure ATP, it's empowering those security professionals. Um, but it's also helping you to simplify uh, the way that you monitor and, and, and go through and triage a potential threat. And you'll see what I mean by that here in just a moment. So to be able to do this, it starts with being proactive, time spent eliminating on-premises vulnerabilities that helps pre to prevent attacks before they happen, efficiency to protect effectively. You have to be able to work efficiently, spending time on the greatest events and prioritizing, and that is and that prioritization is being able to spend time on real threats and really not false signals. And so this is where we come into four different pillars, prevent, detect, investigate, and respond. So around the prevention, this is running assessments to proactively identify and correct hidden vulnerabilities, thereby reducing the attack surface. Now detect is doing real-time analytics and data intelligence. And this is where Azure ATP is detecting issues through high confidence alert signals and user behavioral anomaly signals in real time. And then we get to investigate, and this is where Azure ATP is assigning an investigation priority score to help understand, identify, and prioritize those investigations among all of the riskiest users in the organization. And then we get to respond, and this is where we have automatic response to compromised identities to reduce that response time through user risk policy management and through integration uh, with the other products here to provide protection throughout the enterprise. So let's talk about the first one, prevent. So this is really around preventing attacks and it's, and it's not really uh, about understanding what is not optimized, but also understanding the protocol configuration here. And so in other words, prevention is about figuring out where the vulnerabilities are before they can be exploited. 
So Azure ATP identity security posture assessments are all about helping you to identify configuration gaps. And so risky configurations can then be updated. Now, these are some of the examples of configurations which may be, uh, be broadening the attack surface within the organization. So applications that use clear text authentication, exposing passwords, uh, using unconstrained delegation where the server and the service account that's granted this right is able to impersonate a user to authenticate to any service on any host. That can result in our adversaries being able to impersonate a user to other services. And then finally, weaker protocols uh, that use legacy authentication standards are generally more open to the attack. Now, the identity security posture capabilities of Azure ATP provide reports that you can use to gain visibility into potentially risky configurations. And so through these reports, you can view information critical to improving identity security and how to actually close that gap. And so each report provides the following information, the improvement action needed, number of related entities, report topic or type, report urgency, resolution status, so on and so forth. And again, this can help you take those corrective steps to raise your posture and you'll lower your risk. Now, another example of this in eliminating risky configurations is about identifying entities that are exposing clear text credentials. So Azure ATP does much more than just point out which applications are using clear text authentication. It provides significant information to help understand those risks. And through this view here, we can start to understand which applications, which users and devices are potentially impacted if clear text authentication capabilities are switched off. And so this can help you understand the potential business impact that uh, this would have if I were to go out down this road and start blocking clear text authentication. And so by providing these investigation tools, Azure ATP can allow you to go out and contact those application owners and plan for finding alternate approaches uh, for applications that are using this level of uh, risky configuration. Now, one of my favorite things here is the ability to look at inactive and expired accounts and that kind of configuration uh, vulnerability. And so Azure ATP will actually identify dormant entities from sensitive groups. And dormant entities are accounts within the organization that have been inactive for more than 180 days. And those accounts are identified as dormant if they are disabled or expired in Windows Server Active Directory. And so entities are automatically tagged as being part of a sensitive group if the account has high privileges. And entities can also be manually tagged as sensitive if I want to do that administratively. And gaining visibility into these dormant accounts with high privileges enables you to address this potential vulnerability with this adequate level of information. So for customers that do not look at the Microsoft Cloud App Security Portal all the time, the Microsoft Secure Score provides insight into your security posture, and that's at security.microsoft.com. And Microsoft Secure Score, it's really a measurement of an organization's security posture with a higher number of indicating more improvement actions that need to be taken. And so following the recommendations can help you to, again, raise your posture and lower your risk. And here you can see Azure ATP is feeding recommendations into Microsoft Secure Score. So let's take a look at the detection capabilities of Azure ATP. So the reason why Azure ATP successfully empowers you and your security professionals is to help them become more effective and more efficient. And that's because it brings together significant amounts of data from a variety of sources. And so the Azure ATP sensor, as I mentioned before, is installed on each of your Active Directory domain controllers. Now the sensor is not doing any kind of write capability, it's, it's read only and it's gathering data. And so it's inspecting a wide range of network data to provide uh, valuable network traffic analytics in real time. And the network data is parsed and on a per protocol basis, for example, the important information from a Kerberos session or an SMB session can then be extracted and used for intelligence, uh, intelligent detections. And so it also looks at specific security events, event tracing data, as well as profiling the users and groups and resources from that Active Directory data. And then Azure ATP also analyzes specific user behavior to determine what is anomalous and what is not. And it's actually building a profile on every user in the directory. And so the data is also enriched with additional information. So for example, the IP address in each network packet is actively resolved to find the real computer behind the IP address. And so data is correlated and related 
uh, information and generates real-time detections. And so together with all these data sources and all these technologies and analytic capabilities, it's gonna provide you this rich real-time uh, detection capability. And it goes way beyond just looking at Windows event logs, as you can see. Now, here's some of the uh, detections that Azure ATP has visibility to. And so it's really looking at almost every stage of the attack. In this case, discovery, credential access, lateral movement, and persistence. And so it, it helps me to, uh, to identify this and do my detection. And so both Azure ATP detection logics and the alert display are continuously updated to make an understanding of these threats clear and accurate. And so additionally, Azure ATP dedicated and talent research teams are always looking for new threats and techniques out there in the wild. So our engineering teams at Microsoft are constantly you know, updating this and evolving the product. And so again, here on the screen, you can see just some of the detection of those different types of identity attacks. And my favorites here are like Pass the Hash and DC Shadow and Brute Force Attempts and so on and so forth. Now, in, inside Azure ATP, each of these alerts contain vital information that you can include in your investigation or remediation. So things like identification of malicious activity, um, attempted enumeration details and specifics there, historical com comparisons and activity correlation, and then suggestion on uh, you know how do I go from here, my next steps. And because the details are laid out in this logical manner, uh, it helps you to basically efficiently understand uh, what happened and, and how it can move quickly to remediation steps. And that's gonna save you time and money ultimately and help you actually respond to the threat. Now, for each of these detection types I talked about before, uh, the data and the evidence that's gathered is pretty clear here on the screen. So identification of malicious activity, uh, attempted enumeration details, historical comparisons, and then again, those, those next steps that I can take. Now, they also provide some additional information here. So with Azure ATP and the integration of Azure AD Identity Protection and Cloud App Security, those alerts can be enriched here and seen for identities that span across on-premises and in the cloud. But I could also see some additional information here like uh, you know, maybe credentials found on the dark web or suspicious VPN connection or uh, unfamiliar sign-in properties, so on and so forth. So some really good examples there. Now, Azure ATP also generates more than just alerts. Uh, the alerts provide signals regarding high confidence, suspicious activities that are likely representing attacks. And this thing is not, you know, it's not gonna generate a bunch of noise. If you get an alert, uh, that's gonna be a real alert that you're probably gonna wanna take a look at. And so they usually include things like known attack patterns and the behavior of that entity. But suspicious activities are also fidelity signals that point to a uh, anomalous user behavior and focuses on things like uh, activity that's been learned through machine learning. Uh, it usually takes about 30 days for it to do that. But comparison to the peers of that end user and their behavior of their peers. And it's you know, basically gathering big data and, and crunching it with statistics here and, and machine learning. And that's where we're able to give you that greater visibility into these threats. So Azure ATP analyzes user activity and it compares it against uh, typical behavior for that user. So it's actually building a profile on that user and it's comparing it to the activity of this user's peers as well. And that's happening across the organization. And so this analysis generates a score for the activity which can then help you to more easily find suspicious activity in the environment and then prioritize your efforts. So in a simplified depiction here of suspicious user and activity analysis, Azure ATP looks at an activity and determines where that activity falls in a spectrum of normal to suspicious. And so in this instance, the user accesses a finance server. And Azure ATP is then going to look to see if the finance server uh, is accessed by many users or just that user within the organization, has this user in particular ever accessed to before, so on and so forth. And it's also going to look at whether this is the first time this user has accessed the finance server. Uh, it's gonna look at, um, you know, is this user, is this a usual pattern of logging onto this server? Um, and then also it's gonna look at things like, is this consistent with the behavior of its peers? And it's using, again, all these data points and this analytics and machine learning 
to be able to uh, come up with a verdict here to tell you whether or not this is suspicious behavior, which can be a real threat. Now, with Azure ATP, each of the suspicious activities include detailed information about why the activity was scored such. And so here you can see the score of six was assigned. And so, for example, if this is the first time the user has access to the resource, and it's not a typical activity for the user, uh, you're going to see things like this. Okay, let's move on to the investigate phase. And again, in my video series here, folks, I'm gonna have multiple videos that are gonna dive deeper into each one of these pillars. So stay tuned for that. This presentation is just an overview. So let's talk about investigation. I think this is really awesome because Azure ATP provides a significant amount of insight into the individual user risk. And we, we call that user investigation priority scoring. And this can help the, the uh, security professional see exactly how and when it comes to risk and how those user scores are likely to, uh, to differ. Now that score is calculated over the last seven days across these different alerts. And so kind of keep that in mind. We'll talk more about that later. Now, most users within the organization will have a low user investigation priority score. Now only a few or maybe a handful will have a high score, making it clear which users require attention. In other words, which users might be compromised. And so those, the user page here provides details on how that user's score compares to the rest of the organization. And you can see that up there at the top. And what the investigation priority score has been calculated for that user over the past two weeks, along with all the details here of those suspicious activities which some are coming from Azure ATP, others might be coming from Cloud App Security and Azure Active Directory, and it's being aggregated. So let's take a look at how the investigation priority score uh, really helps you. And it's, it's a prioritization of threat and identity-based attack investigations, which can be a major challenge. And so when you're stretched too thin, it can be difficult to prioritize those investigations, especially when there's many users that might be related to each other. So where do you start? Well, that's where we have our ability to do ranking here. So we're sorting on this column for investigation priority and it allows us to really get an idea of where we wanna start. And then I can also filter that to say, focus on users in just a particular group. And so uh, I can only focus on the users that have that highest score. So maybe the top three here that you see on this screenshot. Now, if security alerts impacts many related users, then understanding the potential impact of an advanced threat by investigating all related users in an instant is not time effective. And so you need to figure out uh, you know, how and who and what to investigate first. And so by looking at the investigation priority of the various users, you can then get a better sense of where to start your investigation. And the user with the highest investigation priority score will also have other associated suspicious activities. And here we can see uh, what that might look like here in a real alert. Now, what I love about this is that we have a description that's customized for that activity, and you can see it's all dynamic there in the sentence, and then important information below that that I might need to watch out for. And at the very top there, I could see all my entities spread across there from left to right. And again, that's just all information I can use to better triage this. And if I open up that a step further, I can then see um, all of the other related uh, uh, accounts that are at suspect here. And so since these attacks are rarely occurring in isolation, Microsoft Threat Protection allows you to see Azure ATP alerts as part of a larger incident. So to better investigate attacks, Microsoft Threat Protection, or MTP for short, correlates alerts across the environment. So here it's really easy to see which detections in this incident queue come from Azure ATP. And being able to see associated alerts across the environment allow you to understand the full scope. And I want to point that out. This is pulling data from Microsoft Cloud App Security, Azure Active Directory, Azure ATP, Office 365 ATP, Microsoft Defender ATP, and it's in this unified SecOps console. Again, giving you scope for the incident across the entire environment here in Microsoft 365. Now, yes, I probably also want to send this off to my SIM so I can bring in third-party data sources from like firewalls and other cloud environments as well. And so when you need to deep dive into an incident, you can then go through this activity log, which makes it super easy to see both on-premises and cloud activities in one place. And here you can see some examples of what that looks like. Now, you could also build custom alerts based on Active Directory activities. And here's where I'm building a custom alert, looking at some repeated activity here within a certain time frame, 
filtering it on some various criteria, and then creating an alert. Now notice I can send the alerts to Flow. Uh, it's now known as Power Automate, which I can then use that to go through and uh, uh, create a playbook that then does a SOAR capability. So that could be pretty cool and interesting. Now the investigation experience can be extended using complex queries, using advanced hunting here in, in KQL and Microsoft Threat Protection. So this lets you to uh, basically take your response a step further to efficiently inspect events that in certain contexts can be in, in indicative of a breach activity. And so in addition to endpoint data coming from Defender ATP and email data coming from Office 365 ATP, we have expanded that coverage to include data from Azure ATP and even Cloud App Security. And so you can see some schema tables here, such as identity query events, which contains data about the attempts to uh, identify information in Active Directory using LDAP and other protocols. And so those events are tracked by Azure ATP to find reconnaissance activities, including activities meant to discover critical targets on the network. And then identity log on events contains authentication events from Active Directory, as well as monitored cloud apps, SaaS apps, and other services. And using this to surface suspicious logon activities, including repetitive attempts and the use of atypical logon methods. And then app file events, uh, it's right above my blue box there. Sorry about that, I should have made it bigger. Uh, covers file related activities involving gaps, or sorry, involving apps monitored by MCAS. So this gives you coverage over attempts to handle files that might contain sensitive information as well as malicious code. So let's talk about being able to respond to, uh, to these using automated uh, workflows. So here's an example of that UEBA page I showed you earlier. And so Azure ATP is a, it's been a, a more com complete on-premises identity security solution than ever before because once those threats are identified, you can then actually take specific actions to respond to the threat. And here you can see the action menu has been dropped down and I can confirm the user has compromised. And when I do that, it sets a flag in Azure AD to uh, identify that user now as high risk. And so any conditional access policy that's been created uh, can also take action on that high user risk. So, you know, force a password reset, which requires MFA, apply MFA, apply session control, block access, uh, you know, whatever you like to do there. Now, these response actions can also be extended using Microsoft Threat Protection. So Azure ATP alerts can automatically be investigated through the automated incident response process. And here you can see an, an uh, example here of what that looks like. And so users can automatically be checked for malicious activity and remediated using actions like confirming the account is compromised all through this automated playbook. So to kind of wrap things up here, uh, Azure ATP has some unique data sources and analysis. So in addition to Windows events, you have things like event tracing data and Active Directory information. And Azure ATP is doing deep analysis on network traffic in real time on those domain controllers. And so analytics are applied to those data sources, making the information actionable. So I'm not sifting through hundreds or thousands of events. It's doing all that for me. And so this could allow you to then clearly determine where the attack may be occurring in the environment and help you pinpoint and prioritize. And so Azure ATP is also deeply integ integrated with Microsoft Threat Protection. So you saw the integration with Cloud App Security and Office 365 ATP and Defender ATP, which is again allowing you to get a full uh, scope here of what that threat might be across the environment. So here's what I wanna leave you with. Um, continue watching my videos. I'm gonna have a lot more videos on Azure ATP and we're gonna go a lot deeper. I think you're gonna love it. And then also go out there and you can actually sign up for a trial of this. Uh, but check out the documentation. Um, take a look at this new experience within Cloud App Security. This is really awesome. It just enriches it. It's not required to have Cloud App Security, but it does enrich it and make it a little bit uh, more valuable. As you can see here, I can, I can marry data from uh, Windows Server Active Directory with activity data from my SaaS apps in the CASB here, and uh, that's pretty awesome. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Go ahead and click subscribe so you can stay notified when I post new videos. Look, I'm gonna be posting videos on just about a daily basis every single week on Microsoft Security Compliance products. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. And as always, keep the feedback coming. I'm doing this for you and I wanna make sure you get the most value out of it. Okay, take care. We'll see you in the next video.